What's up guys, my name is Blake. Today we're talking about three super easy in-camera video effects you guys can do after watching this video at home. You might be asking yourself right now, why are you looking at an empty playhouse? But I'm actually right here. So let's get started. All right guys, so we're jumping into DaVinci right now. Um, and this will work in any editor software, whether it's Premiere, LumaFusion on an iPad or something. The principles here are universal, very, very simple. And so the first thing we're going to do is actually shoot a clean plate for whatever scene it is. So all these shots require a clean plate. So a clean plate basically is whatever scene you're setting up to shoot, you want a clean shot of that scene with nothing else in the environment other than what's already like permanently there. So in this case, with this first clip, we got this playhouse. So I wanna get a clean shot of this playhouse with nothing in it and make sure you lock your camera settings in. Whatever ISO you're shooting at, your manual focus, all this stuff, you have to be full manual to make this work. That way the shots are completely 100% the exact same. <clears throat> so that's the trick. Shoot in manual, lock in your settings, shoot that clean plate first. So you can see if I scrub through here, I just have a clip of just the playhouse, all my settings locked in exactly the way I want it. So it's just a clean plate of the playhouse, all right? And so in this case, I want to, like you already saw in the intro, I want to be emerging from the left side of frame into the right side, knowing that ahead of time that this left side is gonna be basically taken out or I'm gonna delete myself from, the, from that left side. So it might be sounding confusing, but just stick with me here for a second. So you kind of have to get a picture of like the shot that you want to shoot. So get a picture in your mind of what you want to go for. That's gonna help you to record both of these clips with that in mind. So yeah, and then the next step is to go ahead and shoot the next clip that you need. So in this case, if I wanna be emerging, I want, my, I want it to look like I am just appearing fr from behind this little post here we got right here on the playhouse. So what that means is I know in my head I'm going to have to hide on this side of frame and then come over on the right, the other side of frame as I can kind of see it in the video. And, and a lot of this will make sense here when we start when we start piecing this stuff together. So you come in here and then you shoot the second clip. So the second clip is just me talking, 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 and then I pop up on that side of the, pop up on that side of the playhouse. All right, so that's my second clip, right? So now what we gotta do is we got both of our clips, we come into our timeline here. We gotta drop both of these clips together on top of each other. And the reason for that is basically what we're gonna be doing is if, if we take both of these clips on top of each other, they're going to be aligned perfectly. And if you shot it correctly and shot in manual mode and it locked off all your settings, both of these shots will be the exact same except for the second shot, which has you in it. So that's what we're kind of depending on. So the fact that you locked your camera off, lock in all your settings, get it the exact same so that the only difference between the two clips is whatever is the new thing in the frame, which is me in this case. So now we got our two clips. This clip right here, this bottom clip, I got that's the clip with me in it. And then this top clip is my clean plate, okay? So basically the simplest way I can kind of explain this is just kind of imagine you're like punching a hole through like a picture or a piece of paper. So if you have a picture here and you have a picture here, you put them on top of each other. Imagine you're just punching a hole through that, that photo on top, then you can see what's underneath. That's what we're gonna be doing right here. It's called masking. If you're unfamiliar with it, it seems intimidating, it's really not. It's pretty simple, and once you get the technique down, you can do a lot of different things with it. So now I got both my clips lined up on the timeline, stacked together, I'm gonna come over to the color tab. This, the masking technique is the exact same for any editor software you're gonna be in. This color tab and all that type of stuff is gonna be you know, specific to whatever program you're gonna be using, but just figure out in your software how to mask or look it up on YouTube how to mask in your software and you should find it's, it's pretty simple. So in DaVinci, I'm gonna come over to the color tab and then you see this is my mask that I created. So when I scrub through, you'll be able to see that I pop up right there, right? And so basically what I've done is this side of the clip right here is my clean plate this little squared out section right here is the clip that's underneath. So this window right here, this mask, literally just punches a hole through that clean plate so you can see the clip that's underneath. And since both the clips are the exact same, you won't be able to tell that there's a seam there, basically. So I'm gonna click on this little button right here, this little window button. You can pick all these different shapes so you can actually make a mask that is in a specific shape circle or just lines or whatever, or a gradient. In this case, what I did was I just ch I chose the pen tool and then you can come in and make a mask right here. And once it's connected, then you can move it however you need. What I've essentially done with that mask is 
tell the software, I wanna punch a hole in this footage right here so you can see what's underneath it, right? But it's not just going to work. If I scrub through, it's not gonna just work that way. So I actually have to come over here on the right side of my screen and I left click or whatever, or right click or whatever, and add alpha output. And this is just specific to DaVinci. And then I take this blue line, connect it to the alpha output. And then you'll see that I popped up over here, not here, right? which is kind of strange because you would think it would have worked the opposite way. So now what we actually just need to do is invert the mask, right? So if I come down here to the left, you see this little button right here, it's just to invert the mask. So if I click that, that inverted the mask. So now I disappeared on the left side of the frame. And if I scrub through, you'll be able to see that I popped up on the right side of the frame. Boom, just like that. And it's a little, literally, you guys, it's literally that easy. <laughs> All right, guys, so you see this bag right next to me. This is gonna be the quick example of the second type of vanishing shot you can actually do. So actually, I'm gonna take this bag and I'm gonna make it disappear, just like that. All right, so the cool thing about this shot is that it looks pretty darn seamless. And the fact that I can make something disappear that's in frame, there's no cuts. I mean, it looks pretty legit. It looks like a magic trick, basically. So the cool thing about this is it's exactly the same techniques so we have, I have both of these clips stacked up. I got a clean plate clip here, which is literally just a shot of nothing on the frame except for the bag on the trampoline, right? The second clip is just me with nothing, right? This, the, I, took the, I removed the bag and I put myself in the left side of the frame and did the little talking section and put, waved my hand in front and tried to really sell it, right? So those are my two clips. And this is part of what I was talking about before where you really have to try to like kind of envision the shot that you're trying to get that way it's going to be easier to think it out and how how to actually achieve that with your two different clips right because your clean plate might not necessarily have absolutely nothing in it it might have certain things in it depending on the type of shot that you're trying to go for and this is what i'm talking about right here so i knew in my head i wanted the bag to be there and then i wanted it to disappear right the way i achieved that was i shot a clean plate of this of this angle with just the bag right just the bag and you can see that right here, just the bag there. And then I shot my second clip with me in it and no bag and wave my hand in front as if the bag were to disappear and all this stuff, right? So then when you cut those two clips together, I come over here in the color tab. This is the mask that I, t that I did. So exact same technique, guys. I came over, color tab, went the uh, window button, used this little pen tool, and I drew out this mask right here, okay? Drew out that mask. I don't know why the heck it zoomed out all, all the way. Oh man, that's way too far in. So I drew this mask, right? The only difference is this is not just kind of like a set it and forget it type of mask. This mask you're actually going to have to keyframe. So when I come in through here, the mask stays the same until the point where my arm starts passing through frame, right? So that is that is what I was talking about. The way we do this is we stack the clips the exact same. We drew this mask. Down here on the bottom right, you can see I have this little timeline thing down here. So right here where it says corrector and sizing, I just turn those keyframes on. And what, ha what that does is every single time I change the frame of the video, say I'm moving in frame, every time I move these little dots to adjust the mask, it's going to mark th those positions as a spot on the timeline, as a keyframe on your timeline. That way, every time you mark a spot and then you you go on to the next frame, you adjust your mask, go on to the next frame, adjust your mask. It's going to save those spots so that every time the video plays, the mask is just gonna adjust automatically. So this is just something that's gonna take some time. You gotta come, in through, come through here, adjust frame by frame, go to the next frame, adjust your mask, go to the next frame, adjust your mask. And you can see right here, if I move this, how the mask moves and it's actually pretty pretty cool all right there it is guys i hope that this video was helpful for you in any way if it was shoot me a thumbs up and all the stuff that you guys do subscribe all the stuff and uh i'll catch you guys in the next video see ya